Hello and welcome to the EU's most northern country, to the heart of Helsinki, for this edition of Europe Now. Finland is well known for its icy lakes, its northern lights, and this building behind me, the Cathedral at Senate Square, is the most photographed in the country. But in this show, we're going to look at the less explored side. We'll be meeting migrants recently arrived from Iraq. Indeed, the number of people crossing over into Finland in the last couple of months has increased quite substantially. We'll also be looking at Finnish finance and the boom in startups that blossomed since the fall of Nokia. We'll be doing all of this, of course, with young Finns who'll be showing us around their country. But first, let's take a brief introduction to the history and politics of the country. Finland is one of the most densely forested countries on Earth. It's home to 200,000 lakes, islands and reindeers. There are also 2 million saunas for 5.5 million people, a tiny population spread out across a vast territory. Home to Finns, Laplanders and Father Christmas, Finland is a nation long tossed back and forth between its larger neighbors, Sweden and Russia. For eight centuries, Finland was part of the Kingdom of Sweden, and to this day, Swedish remains an official language. In the 19th century, the country became a Grand Duchy of the Russian Empire, but its 1917 Declaration of Independence heralded a civil war between pro-Moscow Reds and non-socialist Whites. Two years later, a republic was proclaimed. In 1939, the so-called Winter War pitted Finland against the USSR. The Finns managed to resist invasion, but lost the province of Karelia to the Soviets. During the Cold War, a wary Finland decided not to pick sides, adopting a policy of neutrality. By 1995, the country had entered the European Union and seven years later became the only Nordic nation to adopt its single currency. In 2015, Finland's social democracy swerved to the right. For the first time, members of the nationalist True Finns party took three ministerial posts in government. One more claim to fame, Finland boasts the world's highest number per capita of heavy metal bands. Well, the young Finn who's going to show us around for the first half of the show is Linda. She's 26 years of age and works as a project coordinator for an international NGO. Hi, Linda. Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. So tell me, we've just been looking briefly at the country's history and politics. You've lived for years in France and the Netherlands. You kind of have that European perspective. Comparatively, how do you think Finland measures up in terms of its social democracy? It has such a good reputation. Well, it measures up perfectly fine, but I think what maybe the rest of Europe hasn't seen is that Finland is taking a lot of step backwards. So we have a new government at the moment that's a coalition of a new nationalist party called the True Finns, and then other right-wing parties that have been, been for longer in Finland. Um, what is happening is huge cutbacks in, for example, education, social and uh, health care, um, the elderly, and school, of course, for maternity leave as well. Do you work in the humanitarian sector very closely on that project with a friend of yours that you're going to meet up with now to figure out the next steps? Yeah. Lead the way. Thank you. We are at the Library 10, so Kirjasto Kymppi, in the city center of Helsinki. Personally, I've used this space often uh, for founding an organization and for um, setting up projects, having exhibitions, mostly to do with uh, youth unemployment, for example. Um, at the moment, um, I'm working with my friend Ulpu uh, on project for Helsinki regarding refugees and the notion of home. So we're trying to question what is home and who is it for? And also, is it only a question of homeland for Finnish people or can this include other people as well? What else did you have in mind? Here in Finland as well, since now we are getting um, like first time in Finnish history actually a bit more asylum seekers than ever before. So it's a big topic though that quantity of people that are coming here is very low. Uh, but it's a hot topic to discuss, so it's also nice to bring a, di a bit different perspective and also like portray refugees in a different perspective. We're very frustrated on the way the conversation is going at. Is it to open borders, close borders, take people in, not take people in, do they get integrated or not? Um, and there's no really like fundamental questioning of what could be a common identity, what is a common home and, and so forth. Linda, we've now 
hopped from the centre of Helsinki out to one of the many uh, neighbouring islands. What's the name of this one? Uh, so this is called Suomenlinna, which means the Finnish fortress. It was built back in the 18th century when Finland was still part of Sweden. And of course, fortresses, these idea of borders, security, all questions that are coming really back up in force here in the EU. Now, while most of the people are arriving towards the south to Greece and Italy, still here in northern New Finland, the number of people rose dramatically in the last six to 12 months. Yeah, so approximately in 2015, about 30,000 people uh, came to Finland, refugees. Finland is not used to receiving refugees at that kind of rate. It's a record high. So we have a population of about 5 million, a bit over that. Um, and so people are a bit panicking because we've never had such high numbers. Um, the first refugees Finland ever got was back in the 90s. So it's still a very new concept of how we welcome refugees and how they're supposed to get integrated. Well, Linda, on that note, all reporter Johan Boudin went to meet with some of the Iraqis who have recently arrived and are hoping to settle here, and indeed tells us more about uh, the many Iraqis who are choosing to go back home. The mayor of Forsa has a singular problem. Each year his town is getting emptier. This is an old uh, cotton mill factory area. With factories closing and young people moving to the city, the former industrial center of Forsa is now in danger of becoming a ghost town. Uh, if we don't manage in the next 10 years to handle that uh, problem of decreasing inhabitants, uh, our companies will make investments to other cities. But Mayor Solko may have found a solution. Some 200 refugees arrived in Forsa last summer, like the Kasim family, which is now requesting asylum in Finland. I would like to welcome uh, all, of, all of those who live here and especially you. For Mayor Solko, they could be the ideal workforce to revitalize Forsa's declining industry. But these refugees harbor ambitions of their own. My dream for the future is to find the same job I had in Iraq where I was an electrical engineer, and I want my children to go to the best schools. While their asylum request is processed, the Kasim family receives a thousand euros a month from the Finnish government. They're among the 32,500 refugees who arrived over the last year, making Finland one of the countries with the highest rate of asylum seekers in Europe. And until their demand is approved, Finnish authorities have decided to house all migrants in rural communities. Irak käyty läpi tai Irakin turvallisuustilanne alue alueelta, se vaihtelee Irakissakin. We check the situation for each individual region in Iraq. Kurdistanin alueelta there are some areas like Kurdistan that are safe. So if you come from there, we don't think you're in danger. The criteria are getting stricter. We estimate only a third of asylum demands will be granted. Around 20,000 refugees will be rejected, and Finland wants to impose further restrictions on family reunification. Enough to discourage many asylum seekers, but for Ziad El Samare, it's a golden business opportunity. This ticket, not cancel, not change. In the back of this second-hand shop, he recently started his own travel agency, which specifically caters to refugees who want to go back home. And lately, business has flourished. These past six months, we've organized return trips for at least 5,000 Iraqis. A lot of them thought that when they got to Finland, they would be handed the key to a house and a passport. And they would stay at home and get assistance, employed to stay at home in a way. But that doesn't exist. It was in their heads. Baman Hassan decided to pack his bags and buy a one-way ticket to Kurdistan. Like thousands of others, he was left disillusioned by the Finnish dream. They ask us to adapt to the Finnish or European culture, but they don't make any efforts towards us. I'd rather be in Baghdad or anywhere in Iraq and risk being killed by a bomb than stay here. The cost of his European odyssey, 8,000 euros and a lot of frustration. Here in Finland it snows for six months of the year and the rest of the time it rains. 
unable to adapt, around 5,000 Iraqis have already returned home, a trend that is likely to spread as the Finnish government has begun to offer free return flights to Baghdad. Linda, we're now in the Design Museum of Helsinki, a, a pretty popular place for tours, but not so much for the Finnish. No, um, that's because of uh, design sort of started out as a middle class, maybe a bit higher middle class, um, sort of uh, a bit luxury, but very sustainable product. So in Finland, it's not seen as like a higher upper class thing. Um, and that's why most of the objects you can see in this museum are very daily life for Finnish people. So, Like this, I believe, is a, a metro seat, other yeah. elements you recognize. Yeah, our small metro in Helsinki, uh, 10 stops and uh, approximately, and this is what the metro seats look like in the metro station. And these chairs, it's something you literally grew up with. Yes, literally, I used to have one of these when I was a, when I was a child, and a lot of these sort of designs are very common. So even this chair you can find in most sort of middle class, upper class homes. Okay, that's quite quite amusing. And what do you think of Finnish design in general? Do you think it's more original than the, than the rest of us, or what? How do you find it? I don't think it's more originally. I think uh, original than other design. I think the um, the process of making Finnish design is mostly based on that it's sustainable and that we put a bit of more money into it so that it lasts longer years. A lot of it goes through generation to generation. Well, it's time for you to go and meet with uh, the MEP. Uh, I imagine you're going to ask him some questions on migration. Yes, yes, I really want to tackle all of the issues on, on what he calls a migrant crisis, whereas it's a European crisis, and, and ask him about the solutions he sees that the European Union should be doing, not just um, him focusing on the problems. Okay, well, I'm curious to see what he has to say. I'm going to check out the, these finished designs a bit more, and I'll meet you afterwards. Sure, thank you. The European Union, looking globally, actually has very few refugees coming in. How do you feel about, for example, the Turkey-EU deal that, that's happening? We've sent the first refugees back to Turkey. It's true that only a very small fraction of all refugees come to Europe. Most of them stay in refugee camps uh, in the conflict areas or near the conflict areas. But that's not the whole picture because the standards of reception in Europe are much higher than they are in Lebanon or uh, Turkey or Jordan. Uh, we spend uh, enormously more per refugee than uh, countries like Turkey, Lebanon or Jordania. If we don't take them into the European Union and we just send them back to Turkey or Lebanon and, or Syria in the worst case, um, where they face grave human rights violations and, as we've seen in Turkey, face also from officials. Well, our basic human rights standards are very high in Europe and there are very few countries outside of Europe, outside the first world, that can meet those standards and criteria. So, by that logic, we cannot send anybody anywhere. We have to be more flexible in our interpretation of what, what are the basic human rights. I think we should invest heavily on the refugee camps in the conflict areas and in Turkey and help Turkey to maintain those people in the hope that when the civil war in Syria ends, those people will eventually uh, go back home. The fact remains that if they make it to Europe, if they make it to the European welfare states, they will never leave. Your, your point is that um, tax money will be used um, anyway, on, on helping refugees. They just won't be used on integrating them into the European Union, but they will be used on withholding camps well, outside of the European Union where human rights conditions are worse. That's a very clever choice of words. Of course, I, I'm in favor of integrating those people who come to Europe, but we have seen that we, uh, integration of third world migrants has failed miserably in almost, well, actually in all Western European countries. But let's move to, for example, European Union is facing a huge unemployment. Do you think the Euro Finland should get out of the euro? Yes, I think Finland should get out of the euro. Uh, it's a failed currency because it was built on, uh, on sand, so, so, so to speak. 
you can't have a common currency without common budget, without common fiscal policy. Anyway, I'm 44 years old, and when I was young, the Euro uh, Finland joined the European Union in 1994. We were very eager to be part of the European family, part of Western Europe, and recognized part. How do you see the European Union? And I've been very pro-EU uh, most of my life. Um, of course, I want free movement, and I've been used to it, and it's been a privilege to me. Um, but looking at, at what has been going on for the past 10 years, of course, I'm, I'm worried, and I, I do not believe in the system as the EU works now. The European Union is breaking very fundamental uh, treaties we have created through the past years. So Linda, how did it go? Interesting conversation? We did agree that European Union is not working in the state that it's at right now. But um, the differences, well, the biggest differences were that I'd like to have a more uh, sustainable future in the, Union, the European Union and he'd like to see uh, Finland get out of it and the European Union to be dismantled. Linda, thanks so much for showing us some of your favourite parts of Helsinki. That brings us to the end of the first half of the show, but join us again after the news. We'll be turning our attention to Finland's finance. You'll see they've got some very interesting initiatives in the pipeline.